Israel could provide captured Hamas and Hezbollah weapons, many of Russian, Chinese and Iranian origin, to Ukraine, according to Amir Wheatman, chairman of the Liberals in the Israeli governing Likud party. While Israel has largely limited its support for Ukraine to humanitarian aid and early warning systems, avoiding military assistance due to concerns over Russia's reaction, some politicians are now suggesting a more assertive approach. Israel doesn't need them that much. Shipping some to Ukraine would be a good idea, and we could probably do this soon, Wheatman told Euromaidan Press in an interview. He emphasized that Ukraine and Israel face a common adversary, a coalition including Russia, China, North Korea and Iran, along with their proxies. Russia needs to be punished and finished. We need to show Putin's regime that aggression bears a price. The West has a collective responsibility to support Ukraine and Israel against these enemies, he said. While the Israeli government remains cautious about deeper Ukraine involvement, fearing increased Russian support for Israel's enemies, Wheatman argues for a stronger stance. It's crucial for Israel to help Ukraine as circumstances allow. We must show our enemies, including Russia, that attacking us or supporting those who do comes at a price. He noted. It should be noted that tensions between Russia and Israel have been increasing recently. Even retired U.S. Army Colonel Lawrence says that Israel's attack on Iran was bogged down because the Russians were. He said IDF pilots encountered an unfamiliar electronic system as they approached Tehran, so they turned around and called off the second and third waves of air attacks. Those hot-blooded pilots in their F-35s and F-15s didn't fly, and they planned to. They planned to suppress the enemy's air defenses and then attack with aircraft at closer range and therefore with greater accuracy. But they didn't because they were confused by what they saw on their screens and were afraid of being shot down. All I can say is that the Russians were there and made the Iranians look pretty scary, Wilkerson said. The retired colonel added that the Israeli pilots crossed the air border of Jordan and Iraq without receiving official permission to fly from the governments of these countries. Recall on the night of October the 26th, the Israeli Air Force nevertheless carried out a raid on Iran, hitting a number of targets in the vicinity of Tehran. The air defense forces of the Islamic Republic entered the battle, destroying, as reported, most of the enemy bombs and missiles. The recurrent storms in eastern Spain that led to massive flooding last week and killed at least 217 people, mostly near Valencia, dumped rain on Barcelona on Monday. At the city's airport heavy rain lashed planes on the tarmac and a terminal roof sprang a leak. Spanish Transport Minister Oscar Puente said that the rains had forced air traffic controllers to change the course of 15 flights operating at the airport, located on the southern flank of the city. Puente also said he was suspending all commuter trains in northeast Catalonia, a region with 8 million people, on request from civil protection officials. Mobile phones in Barcelona screeched with an alert for extreme and continued rainfall on the southern outskirts of the city. The alert urged people to avoid any normally dry gorges or canals. Several highways have been closed due to flooding. Classes were cancelled in Tarragona a city in southern Catalonia about halfway between Barcelona and Valencia, after a red alert for rains was issued. Terminal 1 de l'aeroport del Prat. Sembla una piscina. Was in my vent, then you gotta. Oh, take full video, you know what I mean?
Pag ba sa umaga na yun? Pero la lluvia es bien.